All right, now that you get the image, the proper brightness, so you can see the subject, let's, work, let's uh, figure out how we're going to make him centered on your paper where you want it. So as you look through the Lucy, um, you, can, you see whatever's in front of you, and if you rock it forward, you see that whatever you're, whatever you're looking at moves forward on the page. As you rock it back, everything rocks back on the page. And let me just show you that real fast by putting my camera phone down into here. And you can see, forgive it, it's gonna be kind of uh, difficult holding it and making it steady, but you wanna give you that idea of what it looks like. You rock forward, you see he moves forward, his head's off the top of the paper now. Rock it back, you see now, look his head's way down below. And that allows you to change the image placement on the paper. And so rocking it back and forth moves the placement. Then twisting the head changes what part of the placement you're looking at. So if you're looking through here and you have it turned up way like this, I see the, the top of his head is right here, but his legs, you don't see his legs. Let me show you that. See there's his, his head about three inches from the top of the paper. I turn this, now you can see the legs as well. Now it didn't change his placement relative to the top of the paper, but it just brings into view his legs as well. So you rock it back and forth to change the placement, but then you twist the head to kind of bring into view which part you want to look at. So just the best thing to do is experiment, look through, rock it back and forth, um, twist the head, and you'll get an intuitive sense to what these things do. But one thing you need to realize too is that the view of the Lucy is kind of like this. It kind of comes out like this. So when you're looking at like a landscape, it just sort of naturally comes in the view because it's so far away. Uh, if you're doing a portrait, the person standing in front of you um, is about the same height as you. You can have them, you know, be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on what you need. Generally, you kind of want them the same height as your, as as the uh, as the Lucy here. So you're looking straight at them. But with a still life like this mannequin or bowl of fruit or whatever, the further away they are. The lower they can be, that's fine, because it comes in the view like that. So I'm looking in here, and I see the mannequin. He's right here on my paper. But moving him far away also made him smaller. So now he's only about six inches tall right here in the middle of my paper. Then as I move him closer, he gets larger. But as he gets larger, he also kind of drops down on my page, because my, my view is coming like this. So the closer you bring him, you need to elevate him a little bit. So now he's right here. Now he's about eight inches or so on my page right here and centered on my page because I raised him up. And so now I can rock him back and forth, get him right where I need him. But if he wasn't elevated, it doesn't matter how much I rock him back and forth, the bottom of him is just gonna be off the bottom of the page because the closer you get something to you, the, the more elevated it needs to be. So I wanna move him even closer to get the biggest image possible and to elevate him a little bit higher. And now, I have him, his feet are here, his head is here, taking up the entire page, and he needs to be elevated more than he's on this thing. So if you see you're trying to draw something small in front of you, and he's too low on the page, and regardless of how much you rock it back and forth, he's still too low on the page, if, he's close to, close, if it's close to you, it needs to be elevated. So you look through here, you can see when I'm talking about here. You see there he is. See his feet down here at the bottom, head there at the top, taking up the entire page. Now, if I were to set him here without something, no matter how much you're rocking back and forth, his feet are gonna be hanging off the bottom. It's just, it's just he's too low. Move him back a little further, but on a smaller pedestal, that works as well. And then if without a pedestal, moving back further, smaller, but still able to center on your page. So the, as you're finding the placement of, of the image here by adjusting the distance and the height, just know the size of the image is, is very closely connected to the placement, obviously. If, you, if it's too close and it goes off your paper, you know, part of the placement is it's too big, so you need to move it further away. So what I recommend is you have, you can make the image smaller by making the Lucy head go down as well. If you, if you lower the Lucy head, the image will become smaller. You can get a really small image. What I recommend is just put it at a comfortable height, which is with the Lucy Mini, because it's a smaller Lucy, is generally just as high as you can get it. Uh, then we want to make it smaller or larger 
just move the subject closer or further until it's the size that you want. And if you move it closer, just elevate it. You move it further, you can have it go down and find that size in that placement that works for what you're trying to create and the size of your paper. And then once you have it in there where you want it, just make sure everything is perfect. You can move the mannequin one way or another. You can twist your paper. You can adjust the head to make sure you can twist it so you can see the whole thing. Get it, get the composition the way you want it before you start drawing. That's one of the huge advantages, advantages of the Lucy is that you can see it all on there before you start. So figure out your composition before you start. And once it's right where you, you, got, you want it, go ahead and start drawing. And that's what we'll show you next is how to start drawing this image with the Lucy Mini.